Welcome back to SnowRunner, guys, and a lot has led up to this video. Now, on the left, we have Lime's L400, which of course is a sort of console-friendly version of a fully built Ford F350, whereas on the right, we have the r, &R Customs Dodge 2nd Gen, and I've tried my absolute best to match these things in terms of upgrades. Now, the L400 is running the middle power level, and it's running a 8-inch lift, and that seems to go pretty well with the crawler suspension and the 40-inch tires on the r, &R Custom 2nd Gen, and the r, &R Custom 2nd Gen is running the max power level, which is a twin-turbo 24-valve. So, there's a lot of, like, there was a lot of back and forth that sort of went into trying to figure out what the best uh, power balance for this is. Um, also, the L400 is running a 6-speed transmission instead of the 9-speed transmission because the 9-speed was just so fast that it would completely blow the 2nd Gen out of the water in a straight line. And like I said before, I'm trying really, really hard to make these two as closely matched as I can for this battle here at Truck Night in America because I want both trucks to have a fair shake at it. So, with that being said, this configuration is actually a little bit different since the last time you guys saw the second gen. The lift is a little bit taller, the tires are a little bit bigger. And the L400, I mean, you guys know the L400. You know it, you love it. It's a great rig. It's proven itself time and time again. And with Without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump into it and see what these trucks are like and see which one is going to come out on top. But before we do that, I want you guys to let me know in the comments down below which one you would be driving home. Now, with that being said, we're going to get out a free camera and we are actually going to make our first run in the r, &R Customs 3500 because I've never actually run this thing out here in this configuration before. So let's fire it up. Sounds so good. It sounds so good. And you know what? That hood stack just adds that little extra bit of drama to the like to the equation. It really does work well. Three, two, one, go! Put the power to it. Come on! The truck does get a little bit oddly quiet when you get on the throttle, and I'm sure he'll update that soon. But whoa! Runs really well in the mud. These tires are putting in work. Oh, oh it actually started stalling out there. Now, granted, I can un I can kind of understand why, because the, the last time I drove this thing, it had like 38s on it, but now it's got 40s, and it's obviously going to take a lot more grunt to turn those 40s. Now, high range is actually not that fast in this truck, but that's okay, because using high range in this truck is sort of just one tick above low plus. Now, since these trucks are both able to tow heavy loads, we're definitely going to go ahead and use these 1500s as part of this test, so let's go! Tapping the clutch just in case it needs to downshift a couple gears. It's doing pretty well though! Easy. Ooh, had a little bit of trouble on that one. I think the little Chevy got stuck on a rock. Just barely. And the Chevy got to the line. Alright, now time for the pond. The pond is always a sketchy obstacle, especially for these big trucks because you never know if, the, if they're going to get stuck on a rock or not. I mean, you can't see what's down there. I mean, you can kind of see if you look down from up top, but it still doesn't give you much insight. So as we make our way up and out the edge of the pond, this truck is already putting together the makings of a very good run. And as you can tell, it's very consistent, it's very easy to drive, and it's very smooth. It does what it's supposed to do and it does it well. Let's hope we can keep that trend going. Now, I'm really glad I went with the pre-runner style bumper on this one because it gives me all of that approach angle that I need in order to clear those rocks easily. So let's make our way now up this final rock wall, heading towards the bridges, coming down the other side, nice and easy, and making our way onto the second from the right bridge. Keep it oriented forward. Oh, up and over. Fourth gear wasn't a fan of that, but that's all right. Easy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Not the tree. Oh, I really don't want to have to reverse at that point. Okay, I'm really glad we didn't have to. Let's see how it takes on this final section. And actually, for a solid axle rig, it's doing a pretty good job of absorbing those whoops. It really is. Most solid axle rigs would be bouncing all over the place. And it is kind of bouncing, but not as badly as you might think, especially for a rig like this. And that is the run for the second gen. Not bad. Not bad at all. 
Now, we are going to go ahead and grab the L400. Now, the L400 is in a very interesting and unique configuration here. It's in the 950 horsepower tune with the 6-speed transmission as opposed to the 9-speed. And as close as we could get to the 40-inch tires on the second gen. So, let's go ahead and fire this guy up. And, whoop, it, it wanted to go. It was like, yep, I'm, I'm ready. Three, two, one, launch. It gets up and moves, even with the uh, the six speed. Wow, it jumps so much farther. If speed is what you're looking for, the L400 is definitely the truck for you. Yeah, high range is way faster. Nearly completely cleared the water at the top of that first hill, which is wild. Especially when you compare it to the speed that the second gen took that at. All right, through this little pond right here, hooking up to one of the 1500s. And throwing it high. Let's move. Absolutely blasts through that. All right. Through the pond now. Up and over. Almost completely clears the pond in one jump. Holy cow. You want to talk about putting in work. This thing is putting in work. I did not think that with the mid-level engine tune and the six-speed tow transmission, it would still be this fast. That is absolutely incredible in terms of speed up and over the top just to be equal about it we're going to take the same bridge and get into the power there we go almost completely clears but you know what the suspension did a great job of absorbing that whoa look at that it, it almost acts as if the whoops aren't even there that's that's properly nuts that's wild now I do have to say that while dynamically the L400 may have performed better and done the course a lot faster, I don't know, man. I think I'd have to have both of these things in my garage. I genuinely think I'd have to have both of them in my garage. It's a really, really hard choice for me. Like, I don't know if I could personally pick between the two. Like, I would literally have to go home with both. And I know there's going to be somebody out there that's going to be like, Oh my god, you're so indecisive. Just pick one. And I'm like, dude... They're both crazy good trucks, and I honestly think that the second gen might be a little bit, like, I don't know, it might be a little bit more special to me only because, like, I grew up around second gen Dodges, but at the same time, I love the L400, I love that, L that F350, it's just such a great rig on every, like, measurable front, and you could do everything with it, you can tow, you can trail, you can race, and really, you could do the same thing with this, just, you know, maybe not with quite as much speed, but that's fine, you know, that's not exactly the end-all, be-all for every single, you know, every single person or every single driver, you know, it's all down to what you want out of a rig and what you want to do with said rig, and the reason why I decided to come down this trail is because of the simple fact that, you know, the race course is one thing, but the trails, I feel like, are where these things are going to be used most of the time, and this thing absolutely rules on the trail. Now, don't get me wrong, the L400 has multiple uh, lift heights with flex suspensions, and as you saw in one of my recent videos, it does do very well even on hard trails, but this thing does as well, and I'm not necessarily picking the best lines, I'm just kind of like barreling through this trail, and what's crazy is it's making it look pretty easy until it obviously gets to this corner. This corner kind of stinks, but everything gets stuck at that corner. Now, I'm sure there's a line around it where you won't actually get stuck there, but if you're just kind of bombing through this trail, yeah, you're going to get stuck there, you know, a time or two, or every time. It just depends. Nice and easy. Oh, the trail goes to the right. I was like, where the heck does the trail go? And I also have to say that for as long as this truck is, like wheelbase-wise, it's incredibly capable absolutely incredibly capable it really is all about that full-size truck life off-road and it does a great job at being all about it you know really does a great job at being all about it and you know i i really can't say anything bad about this truck's capabilities because it always amazes me it always amazes me no matter what it is that it does it genuinely always amazes me let's see if it'll uh see if it'll bump through this mud come on Hey, there it is. Now, this thing does spin a little bit easier in the mud than the L400 does. And I'm sure that's down to um, engine tuning and tire grip tuning and a couple of other things. Maybe weight. But at the end of the day, I mean, it all depends on how you drive it. Because this thing will 
get through just about anything that you want it to get through, really. Now let's go ahead and stop you right there, and we're of course going to grab the L400 because we couldn't take the other the other truck down the trail and not take the L400. It's just not going to happen. We got to bring the L400 down that trail. Easy. And as you can see, just walks right into it. The only thing is really, it really just becomes apparent how incredibly powerful this truck is and how incredibly, like, willing to just go, you know? How incredibly willing to just put down the power and just rip this truck is. Whoa! But it is still, like, the suspension is still supple off-road. And this isn't even the, quote-unquote, like, flex suspension. This is just the standard 8-inch lift. And that's wild to me. Really making short work of the trail, I'll tell you that. And between obstacles, you just go ahead and kick the clutch a couple times, and it rockets you right to the next obstacle. Now, I will say that longer wheelbase in the Dodge did give it an advantage here, because while it was stretching all the way over from one rock to the other, this thing is busy getting high centered, so that's definitely a win for the Dodge there in terms of wheelbase. However, wow! That guy negotiated the corner without even having to winch. That's pretty That's pretty awesome because even some dedicated crawler rigs will have a hard time with that spot. A really hard time with that corner. It's really kind of a pivotal point on this trail because, you know, some rigs really just have a awful time with it. Not the L400, though. And it's funny because in the back of your head... You always can tell that this thing just wants to go. Like, it wants to go. It's ready to rip. It wants to go. And that's always the theme with this thing. Whereas the uh, the second gen, you know, it could be driven fast, but it could also be driven slow, and it wouldn't really complain. But, like, the L400, it's like, it's always like, go faster, go faster, go faster, you know? It always wants you to go. Easy does it. But, you know, again, it'll really apply to whatever style of driving you want, and I think that that's genuinely the beauty of both of these trucks so at this point again i think i reached the same conclusion of i would have to either have both or think for a really really long time about which one i would prefer to take home so let me know in the comments which one you would have and if you're new around here make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn those notifications on like the video if you enjoyed it and i will see you guys next time